Hello and welcome to my 2022 amateur license course. In each lesson, we will examine the questions in the uh, technician license pool. It's valid from July 1st, 2022 until the end of June 2026. In the video description below, I've listed a reference book that I believe can help you learn. It's available in both paperback and spiral form. I've also added a link to my latest novel, just in case you're interested. Its title is Asteria Weeps. I like to say that it's a heartwarming saga about the end of the world as we know it. Some of the questions uh, that you will cover may be intimidating to you at first, but I ask that you believe in yourself. You got this. I would, wouldn't even spend my time on this uh, you know, helping you if I didn't think you could learn this stuff. Instead, I'd spend my time working on my next novel. The questions we cover here are the exact same questions and answers that you will uh, find on your 35 question exam when you take it. If you think it's cheating, guess again. If you can remember every question and answer more power to you, because this pool has over 400 questions. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This video is lesson one, part one of the amateur radio technician class license course covering the 2022 through 2026 question pool. I am your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. I hold an amateur extra license and have been teaching amateur radio for over 15 years. The sub element T1 section covers the commission's rules from the Federal Communications Commission, FCC. Six exam questions will be randomly selected from the sub element T1. The commission's rules are divided into six groups with a total of 67 questions. Group T1A covers the following topics purpose and permissible use of the amateur radio service, operator primary station license grant, meanings of basic terms used in FCC rules, interference, RACES rules, phonetics, and frequency coordinator. Our first question is T1A01. Which of the following is part of the basis and purpose of the amateur radio service? This question comes from the FCC Code of Federal Regulations, Title 47, Part 97, which covers the amateur radio service. Subpart A, General Provisions 97.1, states that the rules and regulations and this part are designed to provide an amateur radio service having a fundamental purpose as expressed in the following principles. A, recognition and enhancement of the value of the amateur service to the public as a voluntary non-commercial service, particularly with respect to providing emergency communications. B, continuation and extension of the amateurs proven ability to contribute to the advancement of the radio art. C, encouragement and improvement in the amateur service through rules which provide the advanced skills in both the communication and technical phases of the art. D, expansion of the existing reservoir within the amateur radio service of train operators, technicians, and electronics experts. E, continuation and the extension of the amateur's unique ability to enhance international goodwill. If you get this question in the exam, it might look like this. T1A01, which of the following is a part of the basis and purpose of the amateur radio service? A, providing personal radio communications for as many citizens as possible. B, providing communications for international nonprofit organizations. C, advancing skills in the technical and communicational phases 
of radio art, D, all of these are correct. We know from part 97.1 that the first two answers are false. So that makes D wrong as well. So the correct answer is C, advancing the skills in the technical and communication phases of the radio art. Our next question, T1A02 should be a no brainer after answering the first. Which agency regulates and enforces the rules of the amateur radio service in the United States? A simple browser search should land you on this FCC page. It clearly shows that the CFR Code of Federal Regulations, along with Title 47 that deals with the telecommunications and Part 97, which we know concerns the amateur radio service. You should know that the FCC reports directly to Congress. On the exam, you might see which agency regulates and enforces the rules for the amateur radio service in the United States. FEMA, Homeland Security, the FCC, or all of these are correct. With your keen intellect and deduction skills, you will quickly know that answers A, B, and D are distractors. So C, the FCC, is the correct answer. Question T1A03 is, what do the FCC rules state regarding the use of the phonetic alphabet for a station identification in the amateur radio service? Part 97.119 deals with station identification. Uh, we're not gonna read all of it, but you know the highlights are that uh, a station must identify at the end of the communication and at least every 10 minutes during that communication, the call sign uh, must be tra transmitted with an emission authorized for the channel in the following ways. It can be uh, by CW or Morse code, it could be by phone emission, but it must be in the English language and the use of the phonetic alphabet as an aid for the correct station identification is encouraged. This slide shows the recommended NATO phonetic alphabet. This is the same that the military uses to avoid uh, confusion. Uh, I think it's worth knowing if you haven't memorized it already. So on the exam, you may get something that looks like this. What did the FCC rule state regarding the use of the phonetic alphabet for station identification in the amateur radio service. It is required when transmitting emergency messages. It is encouraged. It is required when a contact with a foreign station. All of these are correct. So you should remember from the, the previous slide. So the correct answer is B, it is encouraged. Our fourth question of this lesson is Tango 1 Alpha 04. How many operator slash primary station license grants may be held by any one person? In part 97.5, station license required, we see that one but only one operator slash primary station license grant may be held may be held by any one person. So on the exam, the question is, how many operator slash primary station license grants may be held by any one person? Alpha, one. Bravo, no more than two. Charlie, one for each band on which the person plans to operate. Delta, one for each permanent station location from which the person plans to operate. 
From the reading of the thrilling part 97, we know that the answer is one, but only one. So our answer is alpha one. Question Tango one alpha zero five is, what proves that the FCC has issued an operator slash primary license grant? When you take, a look, uh, take your exam, you will fill out a form like this one on this slide. It will be signed by three volunteer examiners and serve as proof that you passed the exam. Don't lose it. The National Conference of Volunteer Examiner Coordinators does not send emails, to my knowledge, to anybody that uh, has just passed the licensing exam and stated that uh, you are now in the system. Uh, you will, you're, it's your responsibility to uh, go to the FCC licensing site and find that out for yourself. Before taking your exam, I recommend that you uh, register with the FCC's universal licensing system. You will be issued a federal uh, registration number or FRN and a login. You can use it to check your license status after you've taken the exam. And once it appears in the uh, FCC database record, then and only then are you licensed to talk on the air as a technician. The question will look something like this. What proves that the FCC has issued an operator slash primary license grant? Alpha, a printed copy of a certificate of successful completion of examination. B, an email notification from the NCVEC granting the license. C, the license will appear in the FCC ULS database. D, all of these choices are correct. We know that the only proof of the license is when it appears in the FCC ULS database. Therefore, C is the correct answer. The license appears in the FCC ULS database. Question Tango 1 Alpha 06 is, what is the FCC Part 97 definition of a beacon? The answer can be found in 97.3 definitions. In A9, we see the definition of a beacon. It is an amateur station transmitting communications for the pur purposes of observation and propagation and reception or other related experimental activities. Note that propagation deals with how radio signals are transmitted from one point to another inside the Earth's atmosphere or in free space. We will get into that in much more detail later on in the course. The question will look something like this. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of a beacon? A, government transmitter marking an amateur radio band edge. B, a bulletin sent by the FCC to announce a national emergency. C, a continuous transmission of weather information authorized in the amateur bands by the National Weather Service. D, an amateur station transmitting communications to observe propagation or related experimental activities. We can eliminate the distractors. The government doesn't transmit on the amateur radio band edges. A beacon isn't an, an announcement or a newsletter or a newspaper, at least not with regards to amateur radio. Uh, it has nothing to do with the weather, so it must be the last. So the correct answer is D, Delta, an amateur station transmitting communications to observe propagation or related experimental activities. 
Question Tango 1 Alpha 07 deals with one of my favorite subjects. What is an FCC Part 97 definition of a space station? When I worked at NASA, I supported the construction of the International Space Station from the ground. Did you know that there are amateur radio stations on board the space station? We will be talking about that uh, more later on. There's a group called AMSAT or Amateur Radio in Space. Once licensed and have the right equipment, you'll be able to talk to the International Space Station as well as am other amateurs uh, via satellites. ARHAB is a study of uh, and use of high altitude balloons to explore space uh, near, near the space region of the atmosphere between uh, 18 uh, kilometers and the accepted boundary of space at 100 uh, kilometers in altitude. We could find the answer to the question in part 97 definition section. A space station is an amateur station located more than 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. On your exam, you'll see something like this. What is the FCC part 97 de definition of a space station? In a station orbiting the Earth, a manned satellite orbiting the Earth, an amateur station located more than 50 kilometers above the Earth surface, an amateur station using amateur radio satellites for relaying of signals. All you need to remember really is 50 kilometers. Therefore, the correct answer is an amateur station located more than 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Our next question is Tango 1 Alpha 08. Which of the following entities recommends transmit slash receive channels and other parameters for auxiliary and repeater stations? We kind of need to pull a rabbit out of our hat to find the answer to this question online. In part 97.205, we learned that a frequency coordinator is king of the auxiliary station realm. In part 97.205, we see that a frequency coordinator rules the roost of the repeater kingdom. In the definition section, we learn everything we ever wanted to know about a frequency coordinator, but was afraid to ask. The definition of a frequency coordinator is an entity recognized in a local or regional area by amateurs whose stations are eligible to be auxiliary or repeater stations that recommends, transmits, slash receives channels and associated operating and technical parameters for such stations in order to avoid or minimize potential interference. The question on your exam may look something like this. Which of the following entities recommends transmits slash receives channels and other parameters for auxiliary and repeater stations? Frequency spectrum managers uh, appointed uh, by the FCC, frequency, uh, volunteer frequency coordinator recognized by local amateurs, FCC regional field office, International Telecommunications Union. We know from our due diligence that the FCC is pretty much hands off with uh, amateur coordination and that anything international doesn't make sense for something local. So that should bring us all to the same conclusion. The correct answer is B, volunteer frequency coordinator recognized by local amateurs. Tango 1 Alpha 09er asks the question, who selects a frequency coordinator? Searching for an answer in part 97 requires reading between the lines unless you know the answer already. Frequency coordinators appear magically unless you operate your own repeater. 
We will talk about repeaters in more detail later. On the exam, the question will look something like this. Who selects a frequency coordinator? The FCC Office of Spectrum Management and Coordination Policy, a local chapter of the Office of National Council of Independent Frequency Coordinators, amateur operators in a local or regional area whose stations are eligible to be a repeater or auxiliary station, the FCC regional field office. Again, the FCC doesn't mess with repeater coordination. So that eliminates two distractors right off the bat. Uh, unfortunately, there's no such thing as the Office of National Council of Independent Frequency Coordinators. So that uh, leaves us pretty much with one answer. The correct answer is amateur operators in a local or regional area whose stations are eligible to be repeater or auxiliary stations. Question Tango 1 Alpha 1 0 is. What is a radio amateur civil emergency service, RACES? RACES is an acronym for Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service. It's a protocol created by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and the Federal Communications uh, Commission. Many government agencies, uh, such as cities and townships, train their auxiliary communication services uh, with volunteers using uh, RACI's protocol. The volunteers serve their uh, respective jurisdictions according to the guidelines and mandates established by local emergency management offices. Few people seem to realize the significance of uh, amateur radio service and why we enjoy all the prime frequencies in the spectrum. You become part of the United States of America's emergency backup communication plan when you get your license. Have you ever noticed amateur radio is the only form of communication still working after significant disasters? It's because it doesn't depend on the infrastructure and the fixed antennas. As you will learn, this fact will become more and more apparent. The question will appear something like this. What is the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, RACES? A radio service using amateur frequencies for emergency management and civil defense communications. A radio service using amateur stations for emergency management or civil defense communication. An emergency service using amateur operators certified by a civil defense organization as being enrolled in the organization. All these choices are correct. Since A, B, and C are all correct, the answer is clear. The correct answer is D, all these choices are correct. The last question of this lesson is Tango 1 Alpha 1 1. When is willful interference to other amateur radio stations permitted? Like in football, a penalty flag will be thrown if you willfully interfere with other amateur radio stations. Amateur radio is self policing. There are amateur radio operators that volunteer to listen for FCC violations. My advice is don't interfere by any means. You can lose your license and be heavily fined by the FCC. Here's another example of what uh, exam questions should look like. Again, remember that correct answers and distractors will be the same as shown here However, the lettering and the order will be changed. When is willful interference to another amateur station permitted? To stop another amateur station for breaking FCC rules at no time. When making a short transmission or short test transmissions, 
At any time, the stations and the amateur radio services are not protected from willful interference. Remember, a flag will be thrown on your play if you interfere. So there is only one answer, right? The correct answer is at no time. Congratulations, you made it through part one, lesson one. You're on your way to getting your license and experiencing a great hobby. Feel free to leave any comments or questions you have below. Also, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you're so inclined. Until next time, my friends, remember, never stop learning.